We're here in Orlando with Jonathan Kaminga, potential top five pick. Uh, you saw you work out two straight days out here in Orlando, looking really good, shooting the ball at a high level. What do you think you were able to show NBA teams uh, with your play in the bubble? Uh, I would say I'm able to show that I'm capable to play pretty much every position. Uh, to be the main player of the team and to be one of the teammates, to be any player on the court that can pretty much do everything and help the team, team to win. Yeah, I think you opened a lot of eyes with your with your play in the G League bubble. All right, so we're, we're going to dive right into your film here. Um, we got clips of you, a few clips of some other players that we didn't hit on last mm -hmm. time we did this. You know, some of your strengths, and then again, some of the areas that you you know you're still working through. So, um, in the open court, I think you were still you know really dynamic during the bubble. I mean, you were pushing yourself, you were creating for other guys. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this pass, though. I mean, that's like NFL quarterback type stuff. Uh, wh what do you see here? I mean, like, that's one of my strengths in basketball, too. Like, passing, I got the good ability to pass the ball. I feel like, like I always say, like, I'm not a big man, I'm not a guard, I'm just a basketball player who really know how to play basketball and make everybody, everyone better. So, like, with that being said, we're making people better. I got to have a good ability to pass the ball, too. Yeah, this is a, a high-level pass here. And we saw you, you know, kind of threading the needle in transition, too, with bounce passes, fitting them in into tight windows, you know, some really impressive stuff. I think what makes you so difficult to stop is you're just so physical when you kind of get downhill in, in transition. Um, what do you see here as you're kind of crossing half court? What are you reading in the defense? Uh, I'm just reading the, the way they're playing me. Okay. Because, you know, most of the time in the battle, it was like collecting right when I just start my move. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I feel like when I was making my move sometimes at the beginning, I was weighing and then read the defense, the defense. But as long as I learned, I was just making my reaction quick and fast. So I can't open up for everybody and open up for myself. Yeah, for sure. And we'll go into your growth, you know, in some of those areas uh, throughout the bubble. And I think, you know, you see the defenders kind of on his heels, right? Mm -hmm. And you're so explosive and, and powerful that you can just get right to the front of the rim, right? Yes, sir. So we've seen your, your passing ability in, in transition kind of threading the needle, you know, making a lot of pretty high level reads. It seems you're really comfortable playmaking in, in the open court. Um, you know, here, like we showed, kind of getting downhill to finish, they're on their heels. I'm curious what you see here. Um, any other decisions you would have made as you cross half court? I uh, just pitched the ball to Reggie. Mm -hmm. Right away. Took long. And that's the one thing I feel like since I played it, uh, it just gave me a lot. Like, I learned a lot. Like, now I know that I got to pitch the ball early to the guy ahead of me. Or throw it to Zay because he got a little guard guarding him. Yeah. And no, definitely. Or make it easy. Just throw it to Reggie, and mm -hmm. Reggie going into the pass from the three-point line. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely the right read, right? Hit Reggie, and then maybe he's going to be able to hit Zay. Maybe he steps into a three. Either one, right? Yep. For sure. And I think this one here is a good example of that. Okay, so you get the rebound, and then what do you see here? Pitch to JG ahead. That's the exact same play as last time. Right. You pitch it right away, the ball going to always come back to you, and it's going to make it easy. Yeah, the ball finds energy, right? Yeah. Um, I think, and, and that's the exact play that we're going to see you make at the next level. Um, what was it like playing with, with Jalen? What's your, your scouting report on him? JG. It was, good. it was pretty much good to play with him, but also he had the ability to score the ball. Yeah. And... He's got a sky the limit, so I just got to keep working. Yeah, no question. Um, and you guys were pretty dynamic, you know, in, in transition. So um, I think that's where you're going to be really special in the open court game, whether it's running the floor or pushing yourself. Um, you know, I think your first few years in the NBA, maybe your first year, uh, you know, maybe you're playing more off the catch, right? You're playing more out of, out of spot ups. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is more of like a three and D type of role early in your career. Do, do you agree with that? I, I really agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah, and so I think, you know, continuing to be comfortable playing off the catch, right, and um, being shot ready, those are the things we've seen you, you know, working on here, right? So here you sprint to the corner and then kind of putting it down, right, letting the defense get set, um, whereas I think at the next level that will probably be sprint to the corner. Catch and shoot. Catch and shoot, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
And, and I think that's kind of what we'll see um, from you at the next level because we know you can create space and, and get to those shots at will. Um, but Paul George is a guy who I know you studied pretty closely, right? Uh, what do you like about his game? Mm, you pretty much know how to play the game. Yeah. Like you got all the type of reads. Uh, he knows when to attack, when to shoot the ball, and when to put the ball on the floor. So pretty much that's exactly a lot of people that I'm, I've been trying to watch because I feel like we have a lot of similarity of basketball. Yeah, good size. Um, you know, he's turned himself into a really good shooter. And I think, you know, this is the model right here, right? On the hop, hands and feet are ready, catch and shoot. And that's exactly what we see from you here. I think this is picture perfect. So we showed that first one. I know it was kind of transition mm -hmm. um, where, okay, maybe you have that tendency to put the ball down right away, right? And kind of get into your hesitation game. Whereas here, I mean, this is great. So uh, w what are you looking at as Jared Jack kind of drives? You're kind of fading into that you corner? I in the middle. I keep, I got to space out real quick. I got to space out for him to get space. Because if he get a good space, it's going to make it easy for me and even him. Yeah, exactly. You give him a target. And just like we saw from Paul George on that last clip, you know, get into that corner, the wing, and then perfect. I mean, great balance, you know, easy into your shot. That's big time. Um, I think one, one thing I've noticed from just watching you, especially even out here, it seems like an emphasis is like staying in your shot, right? I think I really changed that. Uh, you know, I sit down with my trainer. Yeah. And I look a couple clips. The one thing I was doing on my shot is whenever I shoot it, I have, I just got to back up. I want to back up already. I want to get off my shot. Then just stand there and focus on it. So staying in it, he's even told you, like, point at it, walk toward it kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there you kind of pull away. You can see you're, you're leaving, you know, before the ball even gets to the rim, right? Whereas I took some video of you shooting, and, um, I mean, you could really see, you know, the difference when, when you're out here. I mean, this one's perfect, right? So what, can you see the difference? Mm, got a little bit. I got lower. I was yeah. ready to catch and shoot, and... And I had my follow through. Yeah. And you stayed in it perfectly. Look at that. I mean, that, I think that's what it's going to look like, right? And that's NBA action too, right? So JG, high ball screen, hits the roll man, and then the extra. Um, what was it like kind of going from high school to playing more of an NBA style? Uh, it was just, it wasn't really hard. Yeah. Like, I'm a basketball player. So, like, I've been working my, my whole life. So, like, just getting out there, I had to just switch up some low staff and just be comfortable. All right, so then it's like you're making shots. Now you got to play off, off the catch, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what about this possession here? So JG is going to kick it out. W what do you see? What are your options at this point? For his set, catch and shoot. Uh-huh. Or drive baseline. Yeah. One pull up and let it fly after. Right. So because the way he's closing out, maybe you have the ability to just rip right, you think? Yeah, because... If I went in the middle, like the way I went, I feel like I got it crowded again because one of my a teammate was sliding it down and JG was trying to get out. So, right. Yeah. So if you put that down and get to the right, then you probably got an easy finish. Easy. You still draw the foul, right, and just to show, you know, your talent. But um, we talked about Jalen Brown a lot first time we did this. And, you know, I think Jason Tatum, too, is a guy who he came in and he was this kind of ISO guy at Duke, mm -hmm. like, you know, you remember him in high school, even like one of the best scorers we've ever seen. Everything was kind of mid range. And then he gets to the Celtics and they're a good team. They're competing. And he played kind of like that three and D role. You know, he shot 40 percent from three. He defended. He made the right plays. And, and his, this is his rookie year. So because he was shooting it pretty well, I mean, he was very efficient, you know, attacking off the bounce getting to the rim, playing through contact. So we saw Jason Tatum kind of attacking those closeouts like that, right? That's kind of how he played his rookie year. And we saw that clip earlier of you um, where you didn't attack going right, and this one you do, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you see here that allows you to attack? Uh, I see just the way the guy closed out to me. Uh -huh. Closed out fast. Yeah. Uh, now with the small step, but he was wide. And so I read that, and I feel like by attacking him, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me an easy back hit or he's going to follow me to get to the line instead of just taking it and taking a shot. Yeah, and the, that's really good footwork, you know, with the ability to kind of shot fake, mm -hmm. you know, step out with your right foot and then get downhill, draw the foul. 
Um, that's pretty high level stuff. And then that kind of leads us into our next section here and want to show the growth that you made in different areas with making some of these quick decisions. So, um, all right, here, pick and pop situation, and then maybe pause it right as you catch. What, what, what do you see here? What, what, what options do you have? Uh, Leisha, I had time to throw the ball to Jill. Yeah, quick one more, right? Yeah. So quick one more, and then that's probably an open shot. Again, you get a pretty good look at it. I know you can make those type of shots. Um, and then as we show it here against the Nets, I mean, this is that exact similar, right? Just quick one more pass. Exactly. That's a tough setback, right? Yep. So when the ball is moving like that, you know, I think you guys were really, really tough to guard. Um, having multiple guys, you know, who can score the ball. Um, and then I think being active as, as a cutter, too. What, what do you see on this play against the Knicks here? So Brandon Ash is going to dribble at you. And that's a lot of just working to play off the ball. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, before I didn't really do those type of things. And yeah. When I got to the Gilly, it's, it's the league already. So, like, I had to learn certain things that I'm uncomfortable doing. I had to do it. Yeah. And I feel like I got good at it. Yeah. Just learning and playing every single day. And then even being a screener, too. I like this here with, with JG. Um, so this is against Canton. Uh, what did you see here? Is this a play or this is just you going on your own? You set the screen and then slip it? Oh, so that play, I think I was... That's when we had to play... Uh, that's one of the time we, we ever play, like, all those four young guys on the same board. Okay. And... You know, I was the biggest. I'm still a guard, but I was bigger than JG and Dacian. So me and Zay had to play a big man. So. Yeah. And like I said, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm a basketball player. So I got to know every type of play. I got to know whatever I'm supposed to be on the court. So I feel like I had to go set a screen for JG, and then that was going to open for me or JG to get a bucket. Yeah. And this next one, too, against the blue, I really like this setup. So, so much of it is about setting up your defender to make sure he runs into the screen, right? Mm -hmm. And so you hit him with kind of the through the legs to get him leaning one way. Then you come off of it tight. And then what you just see the big isn't even giving any help, right? And you're able to use your body, get all the way to the rim and, and finish. Um, and, and then here's another one. So you, you knock this down. I mean, you're really good in mid-range. And I think that's definitely a strength of yours and is going to be. Um, do you think you could be able to hit Dante on the roll here? Or how, how would you get it to him? Kind of a tight window. Give it up. Yeah. Because I know Dante going to always catch that. Always. So you always could throw the lob? Throw the lob. That's way easier. Yeah. I mean, he, you got to know, especially you got to know the people that you're playing with, too. Yep. So that right there, it's definitely a lot to Dante. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or give a short, give a little packet pass. Yep. For him to open up for Biash in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, if the weak side help comes over, swing it. Yeah. So sometimes it's not always for the assist. It's that hockey mm -hmm. assist you can get, right? So, all right, kind of winding down here offensively. I mean, the mid post game. We we talked about this last time. Um, and the Kawhi footwork, the Kobe footwork, all those things. But that seems like the area maybe you're most ready to even have an impact as a scorer in the NBA. What makes you so good down there in, in that mid post? Uh, just my footwork ability. Yeah. Uh, and watching one of the best players, one of the best post up players like Kobe, uh, Paul George, uh, KD, watching Kawhi. Yeah. Like they get their easy back right there. Like, Right there, it's a, I don't got to do too much. I don't got to show my skills. I don't got to take so many dribbles to get down the edge. From right there, it's one dribble you're in the pain. One dribble, they're going to collect, you pitch the ball back right. to anybody else that's going to make a shot. So that's where I feel like I'll make the game easy too. And then on this next one from you, um, so you have the turnarounds over, over either shoulder, huh? So this one's on the left, left shoulder. You feel comfortable with that shot? I feel comfortable. That's why I took it. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't taking anything that wasn't feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. So it's pretty much one of the things I've been working on, too. Yeah, we saw it today. You know, either shoulder, left, right. Um, I think that's going to be something that, that translates, especially 
if they switch a small on to you, I think you're, you're really tough to guard in, in those type of situations. And so um, that's offensively. I mean, defensively, you mentioned it. That's where you got a chance to, to be special, to be a game changer. Um, how would you grade yourself, you know, defensively in, in the bubble? What do you think you did well and maybe some things that you could have improved? Uh, I think I did pretty much well on the defensive part. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I wasn't doing, like, especially whenever you see a defender blow by me, uh, that's just being a little lazy. Uh-huh. But I'm still, I'm going to work on it. Uh, and just not being at the best shape as I wanted to be here. Yeah. Because, you know, we came from. Walnut Creek, yeah. we had to quarantine yep. and stuff and then start playing. But that's one of the, I think one of the problems too. But if you really see it, like I was one of the best defenders in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and I think you're a guy who can defend multiple positions. So this first one just shows kind of your versatility. I mean, you're guarding the ball, you're fighting over the, the ball screen, you're containing the ball. Okay, maybe this isn't even your rotation, but you're active with your hands and then you're closing out, you're getting them off the three-point line, you know, I think that's, that's what you can look like, right? That first clip, like when you're fully locked in, you, you look really good um, with, with your activity. Now, okay, here's against the Blue Coats. They're getting down in transition. Um, what do you see here? Just kind of reaching at it? I feel like I got a quick step. Okay. And so I don't – and I'm wired. I yeah. don't got to reach against nobody. Yeah. I just got to stay on my feet and just lie with them. Stay I solid. Really, I don't really got to – that's where that's one of the part I was saying, just being a little lazy on defense. Yep. But I don't really gotta reach against anybody. I just gotta stay solid and I'll stop I'll stop the bleeding. Yeah, because if you don't reach here and you stay solid and even if you shift them a little bit toward the rim, like mm -hmm. you have the speed, the length to, to get back. Yeah, to get back. Um, otherwise he hits you with a little cross, gets to the front of the rim. Whereas this next one I think is really good. Like you give yourself space, um, you stay on his hip. And then you're really tough to finish over with that length, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's really good defense, I thought, and being able to play angles and understand. Um, and then here's another one, just kind of keeping them in front and forcing these contested pull-ups, right? And that's what teams want. They want you to con force contested pull-ups, so giving yourself enough space. You know, even if you watch, you know, Patrick Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked uh, about him quite a bit last time, right? Yeah, so with the length, uh, I've been blessed. God gave me that type of length and strongness and all that. So, like, just going to the league, I feel like I have to guard people like KD. Like, yeah. Every single night. Like, <laughs> yeah. I have to. They're not going to – like, it's something I have to do it. Yeah. So, and that's where I'm, like, just working, and get, especially on my full work because I know – Whenever I get to the league, it don't matter if I'm a rookie or I'm 10 years in the league. They're going to go at you. I'm going to have to – they're not going to carry if I'm a rookie or I'm 10 years in the league. So that's kind of the, some of the one-on-one -on -one stuff. Now here in pick and roll, what do, you, what do you see? So I know JG should probably just switch this, right? Here against uh, the Stars? Communication too. Yeah. Uh, it don't, it don't get, I don't got to put on JG, but – yeah, he's got to talk just, you through that. It's just for his, just the way I was playing defense right there. Your stance, I right? Was standing up, uh, and then I started looking for the screen. I wanted to get on the screen first and then go after my guy. But if I push up a little bit on the guy who's handling the ball, and that's gonna facilitate JG to even know where the ball guy going. Yeah, like, it comes. So it starts with me. Like it really starts with me. Yeah, and, and ultimately it's up to the big defender or JG to communicate the switch, but you should be sitting down, sitting up, down, you know, yeah. active with your digs yeah. up in him, right? Um, that's the type of defender you can be, and that's why you have a chance to be special on that end when, when you bring those type of things. Like if you look at this next one against Nico, okay, you're not allowing them to get middle, right? Kind of icing it, active with your feet, hands. That's against a point guard. You're making him uncomfortable, and then he turns it over, right? So that's the type of tone setter that I think that you can really be, you know, at the next level. All right, so that's, that's, that's on the ball. And I think you have the ability to guard, like you said, almost every position, you know, with your foot speed, your length. Um, when you're revved up, like, 
you're one of the best in the draft, right? You feel that way? I feel, I know that way. I, know, I don't yeah. feel that way. I know. You know that. Yeah. So it's just taking these little things, building on it, mm-hmm. and knowing, you know, what the best version of you looks like. Um, so then off the ball, you had some great moments, and then maybe some forgettable ones too, right? So these next two clips are really good. So Brazdikis, I mean, just look at how quickly you, you close his space there, you know? Um, you stay on his hip, and you just don't allow him any space whatsoever and then you're going to switch switch again then you're guarding him okay he gets middle but Mm -hmm. there's your length right i mean that's pretty good man and so that type of defense and then even here late in the game against toronto staying attached right against malachi flynn what's the key here uh, he's a quick shooter. Yeah. Uh, he got quickest release. Yeah. He's like a type of Steph Curry. Yeah, yeah. And so the coach put me on it because I feel like I was playing again. I was playing. I played him all game because we watched his film the game before us. Okay. He had like 40, like he had like 30. So like, and the coach saw with my length and Steph, I was the one who was really able to to stop the blitz, to stop him, so, and and I knew I was capable of doing that, so I just went and stayed locked in and just, I didn't worry about the offense, I didn't yeah. worry about me stopping that guy. Um, and then it's this next one here, okay, sometimes the closeouts, they can just attack you, right? Just gamble. Yeah. That's the, best. That's the one thing, too. Gambling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here, I don't know who that is driving, but you can probably be there and keep him in front, right? And then he gets to the front of the rim, whereas this is what a guy like Mikel Bridges looks like on these closeouts. So he's inside of the big, you see. Mm -hmm. So they help. DeAndre Ayton there in a double. He's inside the big. And then watch on this closeout. He gets there, gets him off the three-point line, and then contests, right? Yeah. You feel like you can be an asset in those situations? I feel like I'm able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because your footwork, your closing speed, is really, really good. Um, and, and we'll show it, you know, on some of these next clips too, like uh, just the ability to close out at, at a high level. Now, sometimes helping off that strong side corner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is that something you guys preach? Like don't help off the corner? Uh, that's the one thing I really, I didn't really struggle with it, but like uh, I did a little bit cause you know, we had like four young guys. In yeah, team, yeah, so. yeah. We didn't really know a lot, but when it comes to a strong uh, to the ball side, you don't really you don't help. Yeah, you gotta stay home, right? You just done a little bit. Yep. But you don't fully commit to go help, and you stay to your guy. And I think that's so even that's the easiest shot in the in the NBA or just in basketball. Right, and that, I think that's even Henry Ellenson, right? He's a pretty good shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just maybe it is a stunt and just not let such an, an easy shot. But um, this one against the Knicks, I think, late in the game shows, like, the range that you have, right? So um, what you guys put two on the ball, you help at the rim. You're able to get out to the shooter, get a great contest. Um, I mean, that shows kind of your, your defensive range, I think, and, and what you can look like. And then th- I love this one. Um, late in the game, first game of the G League bubble. Mm-hmm. Give me that. You have anything to say after that one or no? Are you a trash talker? Sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes. I guess the last question for you here before you go is, like, why should NBA teams really invest in Jonathan Kamingo, right? Like, what, what, if you were selling yourself to an NBA team right now, I guess what, what would be your, your sales pitch? I would just be like, no, I'm one of the guy. Like, yeah. I'm one of the guys who's ready to – me to the team uh, work as hard as I can uh, help a team to get to a certain point to whatever they want to get and just be one of the players one of the kids in the team and just focus to work and ready to work with the team and everybody on the team yeah no question well it's been great to I think I first saw you at uh first interviewed you at Pangos Pangos All-American Camp Mm -hmm. saw you at EYBL and just to see your growth has been really really cool man so um keep working hard and best of luck the rest of the way yes sir yes sir thank you man thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to ESPN plus